Will humanity evolve to the next level of evolution within our lifetime? What some people believe about technology and evolution today on Creation Magazine Live. Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. My name is Richard Fangrad. And I'm Calvin Smith. Now, our transhumanism is a huge concept and it can be broadly defined as the philosophy that seeks the continuation and acceleration of the evolution of humanity beyond its current form physically, mentally, and socially by means of science and technology. That's transhumanism for you. Right. Uh, evolution presupposes that man evolved over millions of years and of course was subhuman in the past. And transhumanists believe that we can use technology to guide our evolution, become post-humans. We're going to have fantastic new abilities uh, and the pos possibility of eternal life in the future. Uh, Christian wow. apologist uh, Carl Teichrib uh, described in an article on transhumanism by employing technology, we can take hold of the evolutionary process and change it as we desire, thus becoming the masters of our future. So basically the idea is let's take hold of technology and use it to evolve to be become Superman. Uh, exactly. That's basically yeah. it, right? Now, now this idea isn't exactly new. Uh, NewScientist.com right. uh, covered a story that's already been made into a couple of articles on our website that you can look up. Uh, you can check them out at creation.com slash superwarrior or creation.com slash hybrid. Their article, Blast from the Past, the Soviet Ape Man Scandal, detailed the following. Uh, according to Alexander Etkind, a Soviet-born specialist in uh, Russian history now at the University of Cambridge, uh, here's the story. In February 1926, Russian biologist Ilya Ivanov, who was an expert in uh, artificial insemination, planned to perform bizarre experiments, crossing an ape and a human. Okay. Uh, his trip to Africa, Africa to, to get apes was pretty expensive, uh, yet the Bolshevik government uh, under Stalin not only sanctioned it, but also financed it at a time when few Russians were actually allowed even out of the country. Yeah, note that it wasn't only the Bolshevik government that financed Ivanov's uh, vision. Uh, Etkind writes that when news of Ivanov's proposal reached USA shores, reached the shores of the U.S. in the 1920s, Quote, the American Association for the Advancement of Atheism announced its fundraising campaign to support Ivanov's project. Exactly. Atheists supported it. Atheists yeah. supported it. So when details emerged of uh, Ivanov's attempts to create an ape-human hybrid uh, th that emerged in the 1990s from newly opened Russian archives, there was a suggestion, and, and that has since been verified, that he had uh, been ordered to breed super strong warriors. That's right. And that was the idea for what the Sun in London dubbed Stalin's mutant ape army. That's so right. Incredible. And now Ivanov and, and a surgeon, Sergei Voronov, made headlines by transplanting a woman's ovary into a chimp called Nora and then inseminating her with human sperm. The idea of an uh, ape-human hybrid was, of course, both shocking but fascinating to people as well. Now, Ivanov returned to Guinea, captured chimps uh, um, with a lot of difficulty, and eventually inseminated three of them. By now, he, he, he had a second experiment in mind to inseminate women with chimp sperm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Knowing no local woman would agree, he planned to do this under the pretext of a medical examination, but uh, the French government actually uh, forbade it. None of his experiments uh, went anywhere, and in 1930, Ivanov came under a political criticism during the Great Purge, and uh, he was arrested, he was sentenced to five years exile, and he eventually died from a stroke in uh, 1932. Yeah, remarkable. And why did Ivanov want so badly to produce a baby that was a half ape, half human? Right. And why did the Bolsheviks encourage him? Yeah. Well, according to New Scientist, an article on NewScientist.com, when Ivanov put his proposal to the Academy of Sciences, he painted it as the experiment that would prove men had evolved from apes. If he crossed an ape and a human and produced viable offspring, then that would mean that Darwin was right about how closely related we are, says Etkind. When Ivanov approached the government, he stressed how 
proving Darwin right would strike a blow against religion, which the Bol Bolsheviks were struggling to stamp out. Success would not only bolster the reputation of Soviet science, but provide useful anti-religious propaganda to boot. Right. So, so this idea of using a, a technology to enhance or create new types of humans uh, due to belief in Darwinian evolution has been around for a while. And, uh, and actually next we're going to see where, uh, where that's actually been taken uh, more recently when we come back. In 1923, American microscopist Theophilus Painter announced to the world that humans have 48 chromosomes. This number was repeated like a mantra for several decades until plant cytologist Albert Levan announced in 1956 that it was wrong. The actual number is 46. The wrong information repeated frequently enough often becomes accepted as fact. This is known as reinforcement syndrome. Many eminent scientists accepted that humans had 48 chromosomes, even though their microscopes said otherwise. The same scenario exists with the supposed extinction of dinosaurs 65 million years ago. Much evidence suggests it's wrong, such as historical accounts of dragons that sound like dinosaurs and the existence of blood cells and proteins in dinosaur fossils. However, the idea that dinosaurs became extinct 65 million years ago has become very hard to dislodge. This is another example of reinforcement syndrome. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. If you've just tuned in, uh, we're talking about transhumanism, which is the idea of using modern technology to help us control, guide, and, uh, and accelerate our evolution. Yes. Now, before we move on here, some people um, may be wondering why this fellow Ivanov right. had any credibility whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, with the stuff that uh, we just summarized what he was doing there. I mean, can, uh, some animals can hybridize. Right. So were his, uh, uh, what, was his, uh, what were his ideas about? Was he wrong? Right. Well, I mean, we're going to digress here a little bit from transhumanism, but anyway, uh, Ivanov was initially not regarded as a crank. Uh, he, he was actually, initially. Yeah, he established himself as a, a, a pretty good reputation as a successful breeder of, of hybrid animals so using artificial insemination techniques. Not, notably, he, he produced a Z-donk, which is like a zebra uh, donkey hybrid, okay. a Zubron, which is a European bison cow hybrid, uh, various combinations of rats, mice, guinea pigs, and rabbits. So he established his credit ability and he actually told a, a gathering of zoologists in 1910 that he believed that it might even be possible to possible to create hybrids between apes and their closest relatives okay. which meant uh, apes this is all due to his belief in evolution of course right the fundamental flaw in Ivanov's uh, argument is that he failed to recognize or, or at least acknowledge that zebras and donkeys although labeled as different species are in fact members of the same biblical kind. Right. And that's where he went off the rails. But the, the limits of hybridization are clearly that such different kinds of creatures cannot be hybridized with one another. For example, you can't cross an antelope with a pig <laughs> and a panda with an aardvark, but it is possible to hybridize lions and tigers and dolphins and killer whales, for right. example. I mean, creationists are often misrepresented by, uh, you know, believing that God created all the species that we have today, right? Yes. right? Just like they are today in the beginning. Uh, this is a concept called fixity of species, um, and the Bible doesn't actually mention that, but we're often accused of believing it. That's true. Um, you know, universities professors a lot, uh, often show students, that, look, we, we've just shown this new species has arisen and that, you know, in, in a fruit fly or something like that, and then that disproves uh, Genesis creation because we've got a new species, et cetera. Now, uh, most people are familiar with the evolutionists' uh, supposed tree of life, but they're kind of unfamiliar with the creationist belief in, in what we'd call a crea the creationist orchard, right? So you've got all these different kinds that were created by God, and of course through natural selection and, and mutation, you can actually get them branching out and give different types of dogs or different types of the horse kind or or or. or apples or whatever you know you're talking about but um, there were each specific kind created and they diverged from there rather than all starting from one point and diverging into everything that's that's ever been right yes but what is a created kind uh, the creation scientist Carlos Linnaeus fa who founded the science of, uh, of taxonomy tried to determine the created kinds right he, def he defined species as a group of organisms that could interbreed among themselves but not with one another. That's akin to the Genesis concept. That's where he was going. However, he named many species without doing any breeding experiments. In his later years, 
He did extensive hybridization experiments and realized that his species concept was too narrow for the species to be considered as the created kinds. They're not synonymous. That's important to understand. Right. Uh, though he, he thought maybe the, the, the genus level uh, corresponded better with the original created kind. Right. However, if two species won't hybridize, it doesn't necessarily prove that they're not originally from the same kind. I right. mean, we all know couples who, who don't have children. It doesn't mean they're, they're not yeah. from the same species. <laughs> Yeah, right. Now, in, in the case of three species, for example, if you, if you have a look at A, B, and C here, if A and B can hybridize with C, then it suggests that all three are the same created kind, whether or not A and B can hybridize with each other. Uh, now, breeding barriers can arise through, such, uh, through uh, mutations, right. things like mutations and other things as well. Uh, for example, two different forms of uh, ferment flies, Drosoph Drosophila, produced offspring that could not breed with the parent species. Um, that is, they were a new biological species, technically. Uh, this was due to a slight chromosomal rearrangement, not, with, not the result of any new genetic information. The new species was basically indistinguishable from the parents and obviously uh, the same, it was the same kind as the parents, same biblical kind, obviously, since it came from them. If two animals or two plants can hybridize, uh, at least enough to produce a truly fertilized egg, then they must belong to or, or have descended from the same original kind. If the, hybridiz if the hybridizing uh, species are from um, different genera, a different genera in, in a family, it suggests that the whole family might have come from one created kind. If the genera are uh, in different families within a different order, it suggests that maybe the whole order may have derived from the original created kind, and that's what we can discover from hybridization experiments. With all the responsibilities that most pastors have, it is often too much to ask them to keep up with all the latest science that supports the Bible and creation. The Information Department at CMI reviews the leading evolutionary science publications so that our scientists and speakers are both constantly updated with the latest evolutionist information and able to refute it. Give your pastor a break. Book a CMI speaker into your church for a faith-strengthening Sunday morning message. Visit creation.com to contact your nearest CMI office. Our subject today is transhumanism, the, the philosophy that seeks the continuation and acceleration of the evolution of humanity by means of science and technology. All right, so let's get back to our main topic. Right. Um, uh, now, the use of sy synthetic materials such as surgical implants, and we have, there's various examples of, of that, uh, right. tracking devices and chips and so on, uh, extraocular implants that you can, uh, you can have put in your head and yeah. all kinds of different things. There, there's no biblical reason why Christians shouldn't take advantage of these things as long as it doesn't violate Christian principles, what the Bible says. Right. So as some people have said that Christians are against science that can improve the quality of life. But the fact is we, we live in a sin-cursed world and, and uh, of course, you know, so using the, the, the resources we have to improve our life, overcome disease, etc. Um, you know, we, we have the Genesis 128 dominion mandate and, and of course Jesus himself reversing uh, disease and death through his miracles. That They're our example of the fact that we can use resources to um, to, to, to help help ourselves, etc. However, this doesn't extend to people harming other humans to improve their own welfare, right. such as yes. abortion, euthanasia, embryo stem cell research, etc. And of course, uh, so Christian philosophy uh, can be used in science in a, in a positive way. It's just uh, sometimes science can be misused, and this is the case with some of the transhumanist ideas. Sure. Yeah. Now, fans of the Star Trek uh, series <laughs> will recognize the the Borg and and the. Uh, the statement, resistance is futile. Right, right. Uh, the warning delivered by humanity's arch nemesis, the, the Borg. And, and, and if you're not familiar with the Borg, uh, they had all si sorts of, uh, you know, cybernetic implants and all kinds of things like this sticking out of their, uh, their, their bodies and so on. These beings had integrated together uh, via technological implants, as transhumanism essentially, yeah. that overrode the victim's consciousness and they formed one massive hive-like um, uh, existence for its members. Right. And, and some, some people think, well, that's just, you know, fiction or whatever like that. But yeah. it might yeah. be, people might be surprised when they read, he, you know, headlines in newspapers and stuff, articles like, excuse me, is your tooth ringing? <laughs> uh, it describes a dental implant that would allow a person to receive digital signals from radios and mobile phones. Uh, and that's, that's a real 
no. real headline. Yeah, ask, we can ask the question, why would anybody want voices in their head? <laughs> I mean, what's the advantage there? Well, the designer, Jimmy uh, Loizo, explains it offers a Darwinian advantage to the user whereby they have an advantage over their competition, although not a random mutation, but a chosen one. We are very interested in post-human evolution. And I guess if you're going to get surround sound, then you'd have to have a grill or something like that. Yeah, wow. Yeah. You watch movies in your head. Yeah. Um, and, and how about this headline? Uh, professor to surgically implant camera in his head. Yeah. Uh, this is Wafa Bilal, an Iraqi assistant professor in the photography and imaging department of NYU's Tisch School of the Arts, intends to undergo surgery in coming weeks to install the camera, according to several people familiar with the project. Awesome. <laughs> so his, his <laughs> students really do have to worry about him having eyes in the back of his head, I guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we can see where this is going. Some people might think, well, this is just random stuff and, and uh, you know, things here and there. But from people who have a Darwinian point of view, uh, they want to take this idea to, into a, you know, much, much further. This transhumanism idea, is, it's a global phenomenon. It's growing in popularity. It's got a broad base of supporters. It's all inclusive, yeah, right? It yeah. embraces Darwinism. It embraces intelligent design. It em embraces spirituality, belief in extraterrestrial. And it's all kind of wrapped up in this self guided salvation message that we're going to be able to save ourselves through technology. Yeah, amazing. This is more than overcoming illnesses and diseases, it's gone way beyond that uh, and, and birth defects and so on since the fall. According to some transhumanists, the answer to humanity's ultimate problems is a worldwide technology-induced unity. Yep. Look at this quote from a transhumanist article. The 21st century could end in world peace, universal <laughs> prosperity, and evolution to a higher level of compassion and accomplishment. Humanity would become like a single, distributed, interconnected brain based in new core pathways of society. Right. Here's, wow. an, here's another uh, uh, quote. Um, from uh, leading transhumanist Mark Pesci, who said, We seek translation to an incorruptible form, therefore to bless ourselves with perfect knowledge and perfect will, to become as gods, take the universe in our hand and transform it in our image for our own delight. As it is on earth, so it shall be in the heavens, the inevitable result of the incredible improbability. The arrow of evolution is lipping us into the transhuman, an apotheosis, to reason, salvation, attained by good works. So you can see here, there's a lot of biblical terminology uh, incorporated in this concept, yeah. but you can see a lot of anti-biblical sure. sentiment yeah. within it as well. That's right. Many people are under the mistaken impression that people from different racial backgrounds have big differences in their DNA instructions. But this is not the case. The entire human race has a remarkably low level of genetic variety. Some biologists have remarked that if you sequence the DNA of two humans on opposite sides of the globe, their DNA would show less variation than that of two chimpanzees on the same mountain in Africa. These discoveries have profound implications. Since the human race has low genetic variety, this means it must have originated fairly recently. Racial groups have not, therefore, evolved independently over long periods of time. These discoveries are consistent with the Bible's version of history, whereby the human population originated from two parents only thousands of years ago, and that the people groups have originated since then. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Our subject today is transhumanism, which is a philosophy that seeks the continuation and acceleration of the evolution of humanity by means of science and technology. Now, you know, most transhumanists uh, emphasize only the, the seemingly beneficial aspects of their beliefs. Um, right. But, you know, the obvious ties to eugenics, uh, the eugenics movement here is actually very clear. Uh, you know, for many it seems that, that the end justifies the means. Uh, that, that kind of approach is taken sometimes. As human, a human cloning researcher, uh, Richard Seed said, we're going to become gods, period. If you don't like it, get off. You don't have to contribute, you don't have to participate, but if you're going to interfere with me becoming a god, we're going to have big trouble, then we'll have warfare. Now, using Darwinian <laughs> principles to improve mankind is, is totally logical within a Darwinian worldview, of as, course. as this guy mentions here. Um, why not give evolution a hand? Right. If evolution is having a little trouble evolving humans, <laughs> such help could be regarded as a part of the evolutionary process itself. So right. th that's, that's kind of where it's going. But the concept of engineering a better race has been tried before. We've exactly. heard this before. It's not new. 
and the horrific consequences of social Darwinism. Uh, uh, just applied, uh, applied. For example, in Nazi Germany, yep. uh, that was a prime example of survival of the fittest. Uh, let's let's help evolution along, and we'll yep. just get rid of all of the unfit varieties of, well, as they saw them, the different varieties of races. Right. So. And now, uh, the transhumanist group Technolife's website contains a video uh, stating, "Who will settle for normal when you can be perfect? Superior bodies and minds, bodies without pain, without limits. Now we can offer you to be happy, healthy, beautiful, and forever young." Um, now, some people consider this a, a, a fringe uh, movement, except for the fact that this website I just quoted from represents a research project funded by the European Union. Wow. The European Union is an economic and political unit, uh, a union of 27 uh, member states located uh, primarily in Europe, including the UK, France, Germany, Sweden, etc. So this, yeah. this is a widespread um, concept. It's not just something being done in a corner anymore. Yep. A quick overview of a 2003 U.S. report issued by the National Science Foundation and the Department of Commerce titled Converging Technologies for Improving Human Performance reveals that these ideas uh, are indeed far-reaching. Yes. Um, the, the extensive 405-page report uh, explains the goal, that, that its goal isn't just building better bodies, uh, or, or more effective minds, but actually preventing the, inevil, the inevitable societal catastrophe is, is the way they're describing it. Right. Its introduction read this way. This report underlies several broad long-term implications of converging technologies in key areas of human activity, including working, learning, aging, group interaction, and human evolution. Activities that accelerate convergence to improve human performance must be enhanced, to monitor the result in societal evolution. So you wow. can see the, the concepts here. Evolution is a fact that we're going to socially engineer our evolution and the whole society and we're going to have panacea here. So, you know, here's a future where all mankind's problems are solved, supposedly. Yeah. No yeah. tears, no pain, no struggle for existence, no conflict with each other, uh, new perfect bodies and minds, and we're going to have eternal life. I mean, sounds great, doesn't it? The problem is is that transhumanism is based on a lie. It is, yeah. it, It's based on the concept of evolution, which isn't true. And, and so all transhumanist hopes and dreams are built on a foundation believing molecules demand uh, evolution is, is reality. Now, mankind's hopes can be achieved. Right. We can have eternal life. We can live in a world without tears and pain and have incorruptible bodies. For yes. those of you who have who've read scripture or attended church for a little while, you, you, you recognize these words, of course. Yes. That's the future state of believers. In heaven, there's going to be no tears, no curse. We're going to have our corruptible bodies are going to be done away with, and we're going to have incorruptible bodies. That's the ultimate transhumanism. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it, it, it's interesting that what it is is people trying to achieve uh, what we're going to achieve when we get to heaven, yeah. but without God. Right. That it, it says anything but God kind of concept, right? We're going to do it all on our own, uh, et cetera. Now, um, uh, you know, many Christians are concerned about things like, you know, what about uh, gen genetically modified foods? What about uh, cloning? All these types of things. Yeah. And uh, Dr. Don Batten, who's a, a, a biologist on our uh, uh, staff in Australia has produced a, a DVD called Frankenstein Foods and Fetuses. It's kind of a, a quirky title, but it's just amazing. It covers all sorts of these types of things. And yeah, if you'd like to yeah. get a copy of this DVD, you can get it for 50% off simply by going to the website and uh, putting in CML FFF, and you can get this DVD that will explain all those things. Absolutely uh, uh, a great DVD for 50% off our regular books. Genesis Verse by Verse is a Bible study tool available on CMI's website, designed to help pastors, students, and laymen alike study the book of Genesis like never before. And it's completely free. Simply look up any verse in Genesis 1-11, to or just scroll down the page. The center column provides links to articles that answer common questions pertaining to that verse, and the topics that naturally arise from them. Visit creation.com to use it today. Well, this is the in the news section, and uh, and uh, we've got an interesting story. Uh, uh, current news reports uh, cite a recent scientific paper. It kind of sounds like uh, the premise of a B-rated horror movie. It's uh, tree climbing crocodiles. Okay, well that'll freak anybody out. That would freak That's... anybody out. Yeah, <laughs> the the paper's abstract reads: climbing behavior is common amongst crocodilians. Now, 
This is probably a little disconcerting for uh, for readers and, of course, bird watchers. Can you imagine being, <laughs> whoa, you know, what's, what's that thing up in the tree? It's a crocodile. Yeah, yeah. Picturing like a, like a 600-pound crocodile or something stalking oh them from above or something. But now, now the... The, what they found, of course, are primarily juveniles that climb. But it's amazing. Yeah. Um, the, the paper claims that they've seen crocs as high as 10 meters up in trees. 10 meters. Um, and and uh, one of them, a 1.4 meter individual, was seen basking at the end of a fallen tree about 5 meters uh, out from the bank and 4 meters above the surface of the water. So to reach this, uh, the site, the crocodile would have had to scale a 4 meter completely vertical bank and then walk among the branches to reach the end of the tree. So uh, wow. they're pretty talented. And then they, they jump in to catch fish, don't they? Well, or, or, well they, they think what they, do they do up there? They, they think they're, sun, they, they're, getting, they're heating up, right? Well, yeah. they, they're adjusting their body temperatures, yes. they, they figure. And then they also um, think they're, they're kind of surveying the land because as boats will approach and, and, and the crocodiles see them, they jump out of the trees and in, They the do water. jump in. Yeah, yeah. They yeah that's ama in. Maybe they're evolving into kingfishers or something. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, <laughs> I mean, really what this, you know, most people you, you talk about this, they've never heard of a tree climbing croc. And, and, and this highlights something, you know, when we hear about behavior, you know, evolutionists talk about creatures from, from you know, prehistoric animals, how the dinosaurs did and how they existed and how they lived. And that how we they only did. have as fossils. So we only, we, have, we only fossils. have their fossils. Okay. I mean, we're finding yeah. out things about animals that we know of today that are completely mind blowing. Um, so. Maybe we should take these, these ideas with a little bit of a grain of salt here when yeah. evolutionists are, 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 are saying these types of things. Another thing, you know, when you're just looking at fossils, you know, we look in the Bible, it talks about creatures that breathe fire. And of course, some people go, oh, well, that's got to be some kind of mythology. Mythological, yeah. Even right. many Christians yeah. will take parts of the Bible as not, you know, plainly written. But think about it, if you've only got the fossils, you don't know what those creatures could have done. No. Uh, you know, if you found like an electric eel, Let's say, you, you know, you've never seen a live electric eel. You only find the fossil. It looks like kind of like a snake in a, in a rock. Would you even dream that that thing could hit you with a thousand volts of electricity? <laughs> it wouldn't even cross your mind. No, no. So, you know, if we're looking at uh, crocodiles today and they're doing things and, you know, just discovering things today about them that we never knew before, um, yeah, we, we want to be a little cautious. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you only had crocodile fossils and no live crocodiles, would you ever get the idea from their fossils only that they climbed trees and jumped into the water from, <laughs> from high up in trees? Exactly, Amazing. exactly. Creation Magazine Live. Uh, we base the show, obviously, on the magazine, Creation Magazine. The world's most famous creation magazine goes out to over 100 countries all around the world. You can get a free digital copy of Creation Magazine. All you need to do is go to creation.com slash free mag. Have a look at a copy of Creation Magazine. If you like it, sign up. You can get a digital copy, a print copy, obviously. You can get both if you want. Uh, it's a fantastic magazine that has strengthened the faith of thousands of people all around the world, and it can strengthen your faith as well. We'll see you next week.